I know one of the things that you talked upon today was the area of transportation and utilizing as a one-time opportunity to tap into that rainy day fund. I know that we get so many businesses that are coming in from California and New York and they want to make sure they can ship their goods in and out of Houston, in and out of Texas. So talk to us and about safely. that. So having transportation infrastructure and, and having a f way to pay for that, because it's expensive. We know it's expensive. Water and the uh, accessibility of water resources, whether it's for power or whether it's for big industry to be able to use, uh, these refineries that use substantial amounts of water along the Gulf Coast, all of those transportation and water infrastructures cost big money. But to take 3.7 billion, 3.5 billion, whatever the legislature will, will agree to, and create a corpus to underwrite these surface and water transportation uh, issues will pay great dividends into the future. And it'll be not just about economic development, but it's also about quality of life. Being hung up out there on the uh, Beltway uh, or on uh, one of the parkways when you're trying to get to your daughter's soccer match is, uh, you know, it's a frustrating thing. It absolutely is. So speaking of which, let's talk a little bit about public education. Texas has reported some really impressive results. However, as you know, we still lag very behind many parts of the country. Talk to us about some of the accomplishments and where we need to improve. Well, one of the things that we, is a, is a growing, uh, a, is a growing population. Uh, we got, uh, you know, well over four million kids in our public schools on, on the way to five million and uh, being able to prepare them for the workforce. Part of that is to be able to instill in them. You know, there were, it wasn't 10 or 15 years uh, ago that uh, African-American, Hispanic, they may have thought, you know, college isn't for me because I've been told it wasn't for me. I can't afford to go to college. and. Since 1999, we've really worked to make college affordable. Uh, the Texas Grant Program, we've made uh, uh, accessibility and affordability a real um, foundation of our, of our education system out there. And I'm proud of, of the response. In the last five years, 65% increase, 65% Laura, increase of the Hispanic students taking the SAT. 43% increase African Americans that are taking the SAT. If there is a, a, a better barometer of hope, I don't know what it is. These are young people that go, you know what, college is for me. And, and this state is making it accessible, affordable. Uh, and there's some kids who we know are, are they're not going to four-year institution, don't want to go to four-year institution. They want to get out in the workforce and, you know, the booming energy industry in the state of, uh, of Texas or the technology industry that doesn't require a four-year degree. We offered up a program working with our community colleges and our technical institutions this last fall uh, to be able to very quickly uh, get those young people on track to get into the workforce and also a competency-based program. A lot of veterans coming back from uh, serving our country uh, who have some great skills. Uh, we need to be able to allow those skills that they've already learned to be quickly uh, translated over into getting a certificate or a degree uh, and get them into the workforce. So all of that type of innovation uh, is going on in the, in the state of Texas and, and uh, uh, we're, we're, our graduation rates now the third highest in the country. Uh, in our, uh, our, our K through 12, I mean, that's some fascinating news. I mean, graduation rates were uh, very problematic uh, five, six years ago. So our public schools, the administrators, the teachers, you know, the school board members, they're, they're doing a fabulous job of, of, of addressing the challenges of the day. And, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of what we've done in the state of Texas relative to our our education systems. Well, shifting gears now, it's been an interesting, very, very interesting uh, cycle in politics uh, as Latinos continue to grow and participate more in the electoral process. Yeah, Let's talk a little bit about the importance of the Latino community, specifically as it relates to the Republican Party. Well, in, in the state of Texas, uh, they have always had a very uh, prominent role uh, to play, whether it was uh, particularly in the uh, the, the 1990s and the, in the 2000s, you had Tony Garza who 
uh, came along and, and uh, you know, and, and some, just some, some great men and women who have served, Democrat and Republican. And, you know, I, I tell people, I said, listen, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we choose teams and we run for their teams, but once those elections are over with, uh, we're Texans and we work together. And, and uh, uh, yesterday as I was making, or Tuesday as I was making the State of the State address, and I, and I talked about uh, making South Texas uh, and those universities there eligible for the permanent university fund. Uh, Representative Canales and, and uh, some of his colleagues who are on the other side of the aisle, but they understand the importance of working together. And uh, so, you know, the Hispanic population uh, in Texas, uh, soon to be a, a majority of, of the Texas population, and, uh, but it, it, from my perspective, it's a big circle. When you go back and, and see the founding of Texas and the, uh, the individuals, uh, whether it was uh, uh, Juan Seguin or whoever it was uh, back in the day, helping create this, uh, this state and that Hispanic um, traditional heritage in Texas. You know, my brother-in-law is Hispanic. I mean, we, we are very much a, 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 a a, a quilt of, of cultures and bloodlines, and uh, but we're all Texans, and I think that's the most important thing that we do. Is that uh, uh, yes, it's what makes us unique. It's what makes us strong. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're all Texans. Uh, we just all have kind of different uh, uh, backgrounds and bloodlines and what have you. But uh, it's about how do we make this state stronger economically. Uh, and, and you look at the Hispanic population, their great history of service uh, to our country in the, in the armed forces, when you look at the, uh, the faith and family and, and how that's been so strong in the Hispanic uh, population, the small businesses, the mom and pop businesses. And uh, you know, th that culture and that uh, background is and will continue to be the real background and the backbone for this state uh, as the Hispanic population accesses um, education more and more and, and they move forward in, in uh, this state. Uh, we'll have a, a Hispanic governor. Let's a hope. Hispanic president. Let's and, hope. And uh, hopefully it won't be something that is out of the norm. That no, it becomes it, something that is very, uh, much so. very common and we have a long way to go in the Latino community. But in particular I think that you're correct. We've made tremendous strides. Great strides. We need our government to support business, to support uh, our education and health and you've done a fantastic job of that. The Port of Houston a huge part of our local economy, channeling opportunity to all of us. Same goes for Amogee Bank of Texas. Like the port, we help local businesses expand their horizons. With the services they need to navigate international waters. And the financial strength to do the heavy lifting. So come see the very local, very international bankers at Amogee. Together, we'll chart a steady course for your future. Amogee Bank of Texas, the A Bank. I mean, really, where would we be without small businesses? We need small businesses. They're the ones that help drive growth. Like electricians, mechanics, carpenters. Who strengthen our communities. Every year, Chevron spends billions with small businesses. That goes right to the heart of local communities, providing jobs, keeping people at work. They depend on us. The economy depends on them. And we depend on them. Port of Houston is a testament to human ingenuity. It consists of public terminals, a massive turning basin, more than 150 private terminals, and one of the world's largest petrochemical complexes. But the port's strengths go beyond size. The Port of Houston Authority is the first in the country to meet international environmental management standards, and it's the first in the world to receive global security certification for its police and perimeter security operations. The Port of Houston delivers.